Hey guys, Roman here, so please like, comment, subscribe. This is my review for The Haves and the Have Nots, Season 5, Episode 23, The Veronica Show. Now, I do want to put this out there. Today was the, uh, you know, the telethon, telethon charity event, hand in hand, that all celebrities were there. And I watched it, you know, I donated. The minimum that you can donate is five. Obviously, I donated a lot more than that. Um, well, not obviously, you don't know me. But... I'm going to have the link in the more info box so that you guys can go there as well. Because I said I knew calling in that was going to be a mess. My text messages weren't going through because apparently my account isn't set up for that. Even though I have unlimited everything. Whatever. So, the website. And it didn't work the first two times. I had to wait until the thing was almost over for it to actually work. But it worked. And I did it through um, PayPal instead of just using a regular credit card. So, you can go that route as well. I and there that is going to like everything that's happened so Mexico not only just up here in the US and the Caribbean also Mexico India all over all the recent uh, natural disasters so that's what I really liked about it anyway off to the foolishness off to the foolishness oh yeah and I heard about of course that mess going on not that mess a disgusting situation with that girl being killed and her friends maybe maybe not having involvement I don't know the full details and then it was Freddie Gray and officer look there's just a lot of mess we just need to continue to pray speaking of prayer this episode was definitely filled with a lot of that in a very weird way so we have Hannah talking to well Hannah's mm, trying to talk to Candace. Candace isn't having it. Candace is over it because Candace is in this mood of she just saw her child. She didn't expect to see the child. Uh, and we, when we took a closer look, we saw, oh my God, that's where the bullet hit him on Quincy Jr.'s head. I said, this is too much. Benny's crying. Hannah's crying. Uh, you know, she just feels awful. Candace feels awful. And then she turns around and puts the blame back on her mother. Like, how is it that you didn't get hit? How is it that you didn't get hit? We hear about how Hannah didn't get hit. Obviously, that couldn't have been guaranteed. But I said, oh my God, if this was a... Anyway, so... Uh, we're hearing Candace do her usual. Oh, Hannah, it should have been you. You should have been the one that died. Y'all stop your tears. You hate me that much. You hate me that much that you wanted to... Um, kill my son, you killed my son in order to punish me, that's how much your hate runs deep for me and Hannah flipped and said no, 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 I tried to protect that child, yes I took, I kidnapped that child, but I tried to protect that child and I had to remember that Candace did a lot of stuff in order to get her son back because War had her son and she couldn't just go stop, uh, not War, sorry, Quincy had her son so she couldn't just go in there and get him so I have to give it to Candace. Candace did a lot in order to try to set herself up so that she could get her son back. And I do acknowledge that. But we have to also acknowledge that the way that she did it was wrong. That's just point blank period. That's how we got to here. Let's be real. This isn't Hannah's fault. We can't just... People want to blame Hannah so bad. This isn't her fault. This isn't just Candace's fault. Everyone has some part of blame to it. So that's why this whole going back and forth with them... Hannah's saying, you know what, I pray to the Lord for that baby spirit to find peace and rest because at the end of the day, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And so then Candace is upset because she's looking at Hannah like, so you're saying God took my child, God wanted my child shot. No, of course not. God was trying to go and steer everyone in a better direction so that it didn't turn out that way. But because people kept making certain choices... Then it came to a situation of made very easy for something like that to happen. Very easy. Very easy. And Candace is over it. She's doing her usual. You can have your guide. You can take it. Uh, and it's like, you know what? Yeah, of course. You know, he's the mighty power. I, you know, I'm not sure if I believe, but he is the mighty power. I said, Hannah, are you listening to yourself right now? What are you talking about? You're not making sense. But, so then that whole thing, because that was getting draining. It was getting very draining. Candace, and I agree with her with this. She said, you know what? Let's just cremate the body. There's no funeral. 
there's no funeral. You want to have it in a church. You're talking about you're not sure about God yourself, but you want to have it in a church. And Hannah said, yes. I know how that sounds, but yes. All right, no funeral. We're going to go and cremate the body. This is the most logical thought process, period. Catherine comes in like, oh, number nine. So then, uh, what's his name? Jonathan goes with Candace because they're going to make the preparations to cremate the body. And Catherine said, wait, we can stop her. We can get lawyers. We can do We said, no. That is her child. At the end of the day, that is her child. And I said, oh my God, Hannah, you finally saw the light? You finally acknowledge that? No. The real, her, her real stance on that is, of course, when you're, um, it's based in faith. So obviously this is just the shell. So the baby is a shell. That's why you can go and cremate. That's why you can go do this and that and bond the body because the baby's just a shell. They're going to go and say their goodbyes now because soul's already up there, which is what matters most. And it normally takes about three days, at least, you know, listening culture, it takes a couple of days. Anyway, now she goes and she just, again, talks over Quincy Jr. one last time. Benny's doing his best to cry. And Hannah is just... Ugh, is she, She's just, oh, because she, when she saw that child, she saw her son, she even saw her daughter, but she saw God. She saw God in his eyes. She wanted to protect him. She wanted to give him a better life, give him opportunities, and she tried her best. Lord knows she tried her best, and we know that Hannah tried her best. She, she tried her best, but she should have accepted certain people's help. That would have helped a lot. That stubbornness really mess things up to a certain degree but she goes and says what she needs to say and that's it i said that white casket doesn't look bad the blue one looks nicer but that white casket doesn't look bad it doesn't matter because it's getting cremated oh my god that bullet i'm still trying to figure out how hannah didn't get shot like obviously yes prayer but now we find out no there may have been something else going on there or it could have just been mental manipulation on a certain person's um, state of mind. Now, talk about mental manipulation. That room looked dusty, dirty, dank, disgusting. Dro <laughs> Droll. Whose room? Melissa's room. Melissa's in there. Melissa looks very depressed. And Veronica's doing her best to go and get at her. Like, girl, I know you don't have any brains, but come on now. You need to go doll yourself up. Has my son... You know, contact you. No, okay, so the baby daddy hasn't contacted you. You need to do something with yourself. You need to take care of yourself. You need to take care, care of the baby. I didn't go and essentially save you just so that you can go and ride away. You need to go and figure things out. You need to eat. I will force this food down your throat if you don't eat. You hear me? I she actually took that sandwich, hit Melissa on the head, like, get it together. Get it together. You look dusty. You look dank. You look dirty. You look dingy. Get it together. <laughs> like Veronica you need to stop she said when I come back things better look different you got it don't get any ideas out of it you hear me Wyatt he's all happy he's in the park I said great cool perfect copus wonderbar why did I think that Wyatt and um, Anna were gonna have sex this episode I don't know why I don't know why but what we do see is He's talking and she, Wyatt's head's clear. For the first time in a long time, his head is clear. He's talking to Anne about how he feels like his parents has something to do with Jennifer Sanders because South and because they, they would do that type of thing. They're not above getting their hands dirty. And Wyatt is completely right, but I said, no, oh, a little too late for all this. Then a priest walks by and it shakes Wyatt. And, you know, they're trying to go to a fire out station so like Wyatt could take pictures just walk around the park remember Wyatt was um, molested by a priest and so that's why he has this like oh my gosh type of uh, vibe she doesn't know that and a lot of people don't know that so, but I did remember that now I guess the funds have run out for Candace and her room or the feds might have said okay deactivate deactivate her car Either way, she can't get into her hotel room. And in comes Jim, because apparently Jim is right across the hall. I said, no, we're not doing this. Two doors down. We're not doing this. 
He said, oh, you didn't pay your bill. Oh, you, you have some you have some problems? Well, you know, there's still a lot of money that you owe me, so you need to go and do a couple of tricks for me. Get that together. She said, I don't owe you a darn thing. Well, are you sure? You still in the run? You still shook? You still running from someone? The police? Uh, war? Yeah, war? How do you know about war? Yeah, you still running from him? No, he's dead. Oh, you know he's dead? Yes, I know he's dead. How do you know? Uh, I know. It's just because I know. Don't worry about it. All right. Well, again, you know, it's just a mess. Well, you know he killed my son. Yeah, I heard about that. I'm sorry. Are you? Are you really? How are you going and trying to sleep with her and say, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I knew about your son being killed. Come on. In what world does that sound like it makes any sense? Candace is not by any means desperate. Candace has that look of she's done with the world. Like she almost doesn't care what happens. She, mm-mm. Bad thing Candace is here, so trust and believe she does. But she doesn't keep up appearances. And, I mean, her son was just killed. Uh, she has a heart. We know that. He, th the conversation took a very quick dive because Jim's talking about how you went and you lied about how much money you had and how much money you really should have given him versus what he got. And so it made sense. So he was upset. He said, oh, so you know all of that because you told him about the amount and then he came after me. Okay, Jim. Okay. So because of all of that, my son got killed. Well, you know, I understand. Trust and believe I understand how it feels to lose a daughter. Well, you know I had no involvement with that. Well, in a roundabout way, inadvertently you did due to the fact that you were her friend. Uh, you had her move out. You got her to go and, you know, act a certain way, which brought a certain type of attention and caused her to be, remember, because uh, Amanda was raped by her teacher, and that, that's where she really spiraled. She stopped taking her medication, all of that. Yeah, I remember. This, this is why you need to watch these shows in its entirety instead of just coming in one season and not watching the prior episodes, just prior seasons. And... When he said that, I said, wait a minute now, Jim. Wait, what, what, what are you, what are you saying? Because Candace caught it. She said, excuse me, are, are you saying that my son being killed was kind of in retaliation of your daughter being, uh, killing herself? Is that, is that really what you're trying to tell us? Is that really what you're trying to tell me? Well, you know, it's just interesting how your, I know for a fact, your mother didn't get shot once, because I even saw her. She looked great. But your son? I mean, if a shooter, he went and aimed uh, from a higher vantage point, definitely could have went and shot your son and not hit your mother. I looked at this like... We can't j give Jim too much credit. Because first I said, no, no, no. This man did not set this up so that her son would be killed. Or her son was a real target in an attempt to go and do retribution. No, no, no. War really thought Candace was there. I don't know if one of the shooters was maybe paid off by Jim, but no. Jim is manipulative. So Jim doesn't have a problem taking credit for something that he didn't really do. So then Candace is over it. She can't get into her room. She's at the bar. Well, she's sitting down at the table by the bar. And... In comes Veronica. Candace says, no, no, I don't want to see your face. I don't want the time for this. Candace is like, I don't care if I'm going to jail. Veronica tells her, you're going. And there's officers outside ready to take you, sweetie, honey pie. Candace is over it. She's like, I'm done with you. I'm done with these games. Well, we can work together because I have information. What are you talking about? Look, long story short, I bugged Erica's room. Wait, she threw out the flowers. No, no, no. She, you know, you, you broke girls. You broke girls. You always like to have something nice. So she took the vase back in. She threw out the flowers, but she took the vase. You stupid. Anyway, she took the vase and kept it. So I have audio and visual, i.e. a video, of everything that's been said and done. So I know uh, there's a reason why you couldn't trust her. She was shady. She was shady. She was working with war and... Uh, you were smart. You caught on to her. You knew that there was something wrong. So you made sure to stop giving up certain information. I respect that. You know, with some grooming, some money, um, 
and a whole lot of Epsom salt, I can really turn you into something. Why don't you, you said that she, she was calling stuff, how she was the bottom B and she barely made money for you, but she's running a con on David. So here's how this goes. You go and you rope her back in. You rope her back in so that I can go and uh, use her, get information out of David. We can do this con together. Even though Candace is saying no, part of the reason why she's saying no is remember, Candace set up Erica and Ward to be killed. Erica ended up not dying. Candace can't go now and I'd like, hey girl, I'm sorry about that. Come on now. Come on now. But Veronica doesn't see or know that vantage point. So Candace doesn't take the deal. She's like, you know what, screw this, forget you. The police come, take Candace. Why can't say, uh, can you go and get my purse, please? And they got it. I said, oh, Okay, how since when do we make demands when we're being arrested? But that's Candace for you. And then she looked at one of the spectators there like, Who are you looking at? <laughs> anyway. Ugh. Jeffrey is talking to Justin. <laughs> and Justin is trying to figure out wait is your mother really going to do that no she can't do that no she can't do that no i'm tired of this she can't do that to me yes yeah, she can but what are we going to do i don't know what we're going to do i don't know i'm supposed to be working with my father to devise a plan but right now nothing has uh materialized and justin was like you know what let's just forget about this why don't you make love to me i said <laughs> what as soon as he said that stupid comment, that trash comment, we see a note go under the door. It's by Veronica. She slowly is walking, walking away from the door. And she sees, oh, hey, girl. Yeah, hey, son. How about this? We need to go down to the courthouse because I'm about tired of this. Son, get ready because you're going to jail. And Justin, I'm going to go and tell your wife. Justin was trying to yoke up Veronica. Jeffrey was in the way of all of it. And then Veronica at one point, she's like, look, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? You really can't do anything. Look, I'm gonna show you that this Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! Black Lives Matter! <laughs> oh. And Veronica ended it perfectly. When she got in the elevator, she said, the only black life that matters to you is this boy right here. Disgusting. I can't. She's right, but I can't. Why has Melissa decided since no one's home, since she's super depressed, since she doesn't want this baby, since she just wants out of this whole uh, agreement, she takes a wire. I mean, she takes a wire hanger and she starts to untangle it. And for those who don't know, that's what some people have done if they want to go and give themselves a homemade abortion. But And it's, it's horrible. I'm glad that they just kind of implied that instead of went forward by showing too much because you don't want to see people how to actually go and try and do something like that. And that's why they don't show that on TV. Because uh, I know some people... Honestly, you've never really understood why. Like, they get it. They didn't want to see it anyway. But that's the explanation. Veronica goes and shows up to Candace uh, in jail and says, I can get you out of here. What? Yeah, I can get the charges dropped too. I said, what? I said, yeah. You just need to go and get Erica under control. I'm thinking, that's going to be hard. Maybe it's not impossible because... It's not like Candace was gloating over Erica's body, but still, uh, that's kind of a stretch to me, to me. But maybe I'm using too much logic for a show like this. Speaking of Erica, Candace takes the deal. Erica decides, oh, okay, she's still there with David. And David's like, oh, okay, they're doing slight flirting, but David still wants to know who's the dude that hit her. She says, no, no, I don't want to focus on that. You don't have any food here. Do let's go to the supermarket. The supermarket, I haven't done that in a while. Uh, of course not. So then David gets a call from J uh, Jeffrey. And Jeffrey is freaking out because mom's saying that she's going to put me in jail, that I'm going to jail. I don't know what to do. He said, no, stop there. I'm going to go and handle things. Just don't do anything. Just don't go to the jail with your mother. Don't do that. I'm looking at this like, uh, I don't know about all that. 
Now we see George. We know the new DA, George. And George has this whole chip on the shoulder. George just wants to make sure that Veronica knows that her her goose is cooked. Her goose is cooked and that she's screwed. Veronica said, excuse me, Miss Young isn't the murderer. I know who is. And I'll actually go and unveil it. Just give me a couple of minutes. I, I mean, I'll do your job for you. I'll make it very easy. Just sit there and shut up. So when they're there in the courtroom, Veronica's in full control. Like I said, it's a Veronica show. So Veronica, she decides, all right, here's how this goes. Because George was trying to go and bring up information about, oh, well, there's also, uh, he was trying to tie like every murder to her. It, it was ridiculous. But Veronica gets the whole thing thrown out because of, again, the dates, the, the times. So as it was time stamped, when the court order was decreed uh, to, you know, get the warrant, the official warrant, it was after the house was transferred into the bank's name. And so then anybody that was there can't be used because it's being used, it was supposed to be used against, uh, you know, uh, Candace Young. Candace Young isn't the owner of the property. Candace Young wasn't there at the scene of the crime. Candace Young's prints were not in there. How can you charge Candace Young? <laughs> so then they were like, yeah, agreed. And he was like, but wait a minute. She said, so then what, but what about just the, so if I can't go and officially charge her, I can't use the body at all. No, no, the hours don't add up. You got, you found the body a whole hour after the, um, after the closing of the house and the warrant, all of that. What are you trying to do, dude? And everything was getting thrown out and he was over it. Look at her like, this can't be happening, but your honor. Yeah, how are you trying to use stuff? You're trying to say it's circumstantial. You're saying, oh, there was a second person. That's great, that's cute. And Veronica got exactly what she wanted and then looked and saw the fact that her son came to the courthouse with Justin. She was disgusted. She said, you know what? I have one more thing to talk about. I know, I know who the actual murderer is. It was my son. He did it. I know he did it. We don't need to know why. He told me. But wait, but does that look crazy? Because he can say that, excuse me, he has, you know, an appropriate counsel. So he can go ahead and do that. But trust, he won't. So then the officers go to arrest Jeffrey. And... Even George is looking at her like, girl, what are you doing? Yeah, but I'm not done yet. Ah, uh, you know, you're on, you're going to have to recuse yourself from this case. Excuse me, what? Yeah, because exhibit, bleep, and she shows this video, this nice collage video that showcases uh, Justin's love and affection for Jeffrey. Because remember, she bugged everything. This woman is evil. So it has all the information saying how he loved because there was another flowers there. So he loved her in these flower vases. Uh, Justin loved Jeffrey. He wants to be with him. You know, he feels he's never felt this way about being with someone before. And so then the judge goes, runs off. Uh, Jeffrey is pissed because he's like, Mom, what are you putting me in jail? So he's like, I told you, didn't I? I said, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Jeffrey's too soft. They're going to destroy him. If they got Wyatt, or oh, Jeffrey isn't safe. Woo! Justin was shook. Justin had nothing to say, but Justin had that that rage, that inner rage, that inner entitled rage. While all of this is going on, Candace was released from jail. And so, uh, what happened? I think Candace was talking to uh, Veronica, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> No, Candace got a call from Charles, and Charles was like, oh, you know, I saw everything that was going on, are you okay? Uh, you know, I want to come and see you, and Candace just has to go, oh, I really don't want to do this right now, but whatever, dude, whatever. So they're still kind of a thing. While Veronica is driving 
Melissa home because she had to go and get Melissa since Melissa tried to hurt herself again. And she told Jeffrey that too. It's like, oh, I have to deal with your crazy psycho baby mama who tried to harm herself to get rid of the baby. But she's too stupid to do that effectively. So I have to go and pick her up from the hospital in her own car. In her raggedy old car, because I'm not going to have her go and be in my nice car. Mm -mm -mm. So then while she's going berating Melissa, Melissa's starting to lose her mind because this guy in his pickup truck keeps slamming the back of the car. He's slamming the back of the Lexus. It looks like a Lexus RX, an older one. And keeps slamming the back of it. Slamming, slamming, slamming. So then finally, because Melissa's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that wasn't enough. So Melissa takes the wheel and the car wheel, it locks. And so in a turn, so then the car flips, it hits, you know, those speed buffers with the water in it that you see on the highways, and it flips on its back and onto the front. I said, oh my God. And it just kept going. And I said, oh my God. And you know who's in the pickup truck? Justin. Justin told her that he was going to get her and he got her. I'm a little upset that it was him. But I'm glad that it was someone. Now we know she isn't dead. She is evil. Evil doesn't die like that. Not at all. If anything, maybe Melissa. Jesus. Alright guys, please like, comment, subscribe. I don't know where they're going to take it from there. This show.